I'm Aaron Rutten, and today I'll be reviewing Corel Painter 2021. I'll demonstrate some of the new features, and I'll share my opinion of the application. This video is not sponsored by Corel, but I do earn commission from affiliate links. All opinions in this video are my own. The last couple of versions of Painter were focused on improving performance and organizing complexity. There weren't any new or exciting brushes to play with. That's not the case this time around. While technically there aren't any new brush technologies, existing technologies have been upgraded, creating an entirely new way of painting. Before we get into the new brush features, I'd like to tackle a couple of smaller changes first. Let's start with some of the performance updates. GPU compatibility has been improved on Windows systems with AMD GPUs, so if you were having issues getting your GPU to be recognized by Painter, run the brush accelerator again to see if it's now working in Corel Painter 2021. There have also been some additional performance optimizations for systems with a CPU that can utilize AVX2, and a new preference has been added that allows you to cache the user interface into memory. This cuts down on the time it takes to switch between tools, such as the brush tool and the eraser. Now let's create a new document and we can begin exploring some of the new features. Right off the bat, you'll notice that this dialog looks different than it does in previous versions. Some new options have been added that can be very useful. Beneath the familiar canvas size options is a button to flip the canvas from portrait to landscape orientation. And then over on the right side, beneath the canvas and paper color is a checkbox to automatically create a blank layer for you to paint on. You can choose from default, thick paint, watercolor, or liquid ink layers. You can also automatically hide the canvas layer if you prefer to work with transparent backgrounds. And then beneath that is an option to designate the color profile used in this document. Even if you don't change your color profile often, I think this is a good visual reminder that can alert you to those times when your color profile gets reset to default. One of the things that drives me nuts about working with a new image dialog in older versions of Painter is that when you change the resolution, it automatically changes the width and height. So for example, if I change the resolution to 72, you can see that the width and height automatically update. Words cannot describe how much I hated this behavior, so I'm really happy that this nonsense has been removed from Painter 2021. Now you can set the width, height, and resolution in any order that you like. It's a small change, I know, but for longtime Painter users, this is a welcome upgrade. Now let's talk about something that's really exciting, and that is the multitude of thick paint enhancements. I'm just going to choose the Curl Painter preset here, called Painter Default, and we'll start painting on a thick paint layer. I'm going to go to my Thick Paint Brushes category here. I'll scroll on down here, and I'll choose Heavy Texture Knife. I'll paint with this a little bit to put down some thick paint. And if I go to Canvas, Surface Lighting, the default lighting settings for thick paint have been tweaked to provide a more natural appearance, and nine of the default thick paint variants have also been added or updated. Another useful enhancement is that a visible depth slider has been added to the Layers panel. Rather than going to the layer attributes to increase or decrease the paint depth, you can now access that directly from the layers panel. If you don't find this slider useful, you can go to the layers panel options. Under special layer controls, you can uncheck show thick paint visible depth slider. Personally, I really like it there, so I'm going to go ahead and show it. If I increase the visible depth of that layer, you can see it gets thicker. And if I decrease it, then you can see it gets thinner. You can also preserve transparency for thick paint layers. I'll turn on Preserve Transparency, I'll select Red, and if I paint across this, you can see my paint stays trapped within that paint that I already applied to the canvas. If I turn off Preserve Transparency and paint through it, then you can see that now I can paint wherever I want. You can also duplicate thick paint layers. I'll right-click on the layer and choose Duplicate Layer. I have two thick paint layers now, and if I want, I can move one over here like this. You can also flip thick paint layers. I'll go to my Layer Adjuster tool, and I'll choose Edit Flip Horizontally. Now I have a mirror image of that layer. The thick paint property bars, flyouts, and panels have been reorganized to give you quicker access to frequently used settings. For example, thick paint brush and thick paint media have been revamped, and a wetness panel has been added. And now for the exciting new brushes. New to Corel Painter 2021 is the ability to paint on thick paint layers with non-thick paint brushes. Or in other words, I can paint with thick paint, then I can go over it with something like an airbrush. I'll turn on Preserve Transparency. When I try to paint with this brush, it's gonna ask if I wanna continue painting on the thick paint layer or create a default layer. I wanna continue painting on the thick paint layer. And I can add some shading to this. 
And if I want to, I could select a blender. Let's say coarse oily blender. Then I can blend on this thick paint layer. But I'm only able to blend the color. I'll need to go to the new impasto flyout and enable impasto and make sure that color and depth are selected under type. Now I'll be able to push and smudge around the depth of the paint as well as the color. Now I have preserved transparency turned on. If I turn that off, you can see I can actually smudge this around as if it's thick paint on a canvas. And then again, I have control over the visible depth so I can make it thicker or thinner at any time. Not all brushes can paint on thick paint, but many can. There is a new thick paint compatible brush category, which has some variants that you can try out. But as I demonstrated, some of the other brushes and the other categories can be compatible with thick paint as well. I'll show you an easy way to tell which brushes are compatible with thick paint later in this review. Let's try etch. We can kind of remove some of the paint depth there and smudge it around. Let's try dry oil pastel. Paint a different color into this. And you can see it has a little bit of thickness to it. We can make that more visible if we increase the visible depth. And let's try touch up airbrush with a yellow color. And we can just paint over that with the airbrush. This doesn't affect the thickness at all. This impasto flyout should be available for any brushes that can support impasto. But essentially what's happened here is that the depth functionality of thick paint and impasto have been combined in a sense. However, while enabling impasto allows you to interact with the color and depth of a thick paint layer, you cannot use thick paint brushes to interact with impasto on a default layer. To show you what I mean, I'll create a default layer. I'll select an impasto brush that is called Gloopy. And if I paint with that, I can create some Gloopy paint. Then if I select a thick paint brush, let's say heavy texture knife, and I try to paint on that layer, then I get this warning message that says the thick paint brush is not compatible with the impasto layer. What you'll want to do is create a thick paint layer first, then go to your impasto brush. Here's Gloopy. I'll continue painting on the thick paint layer. Now if I go back to my thick paint brush, heavy texture knife, and I paint, then I'm able to interact with that impasto. Now there is an exception, and that is another new feature which will allow you to convert a default layer into a thick paint layer. I'll right click on this layer, and I'll convert to thick paint. Now we get a warning message that says this layer has impasto, which may or may not be visible, and that this impasto has to be cleared in order to move forward. So I'll go ahead and clear the paint depth. We'll click on OK. Now you can see it no longer has that three-dimensional paint depth, but if I want to, I can now paint into it and have it interact in a thick paint way. This is a really powerful feature because you can convert a thick paint layer to another layer type, let's say a default layer. I'll switch to a brush like Diffuse Blur that's not compatible with thick paint, and I can paint with any brush on this layer. Then I can convert it back to a thick paint layer, and if I want to, I can even add some thickness to the paint. I'll have the thickness source be based off of image luminance. And if I zoom in, you can see it's added thickness to the edges of the paint. And if I increase the visible depth, you can see I can make that more prominent. So I've taken that two-dimensional paint and made it three-dimensional. And again, I could use the coarse oily blender, which is a thick paint compatible brush, to smudge it around. Or I can go back to my thick paint brushes, and I can add thick paint with one of those. This collection of thick paint enhancements really takes a lot of the restrictions off of working with this type of brush. As an artist who uses thick paint brushes often, I've greatly benefited from these features. I no longer feel held back when I use thick paint, and the results I'm able to get are an improvement over previous versions of Painter. Let's move on to the next new feature. First introduced in Painter Essential 7, AI style is a new form of auto painting that uses Apple machine learning to generate a stylized painting from a photo. Or in other words, the computer attempts to create a painting from your reference photo based upon what it's learned about how a specific style of art should look. While this is a huge step up from previous methods of auto painting, the results still have a synthetic look to them. And of course, this is only a starting point and I can paint or blend over this to create something that looks a little bit more man-made. While this is a feature that's geared more toward photo painters, it can also be useful to generate ideas about how to create a painting from scratch. Think of it as an enhanced reference image that lets you preview color and stylistic effects. The photo art palette drawer has been rearranged to include AI style, plus a new photo art command bar can be accessed, which contains flyouts that give you access to a lot of the photo art features. Another new photo painting feature is clone tinting. This allows you to add color to your clone source as you're painting. For example, I have this photograph of a sky with some bushes below. If I wanted to paint in a different sky, but also augment the colors as I'm painting, 
I can do that with clone tinting. In the new clone tinting brush category, I'll choose the soft tint bristle variant, and I'll change the clone source in the properties bar to embedded image, and I'll choose browse, and I'll choose an image of a different sky. That's been loaded as my clone source, and although the color picker looks inactive, if I hover over it, it comes to life and I can choose a color, let's say a yellowish color. Now when I paint over the blue sky, I'm replacing it with the sky from the clone source. I can even vary my pen pressure to tint more or less. That allows me to create really nice subtle transitions from the tint to the original color. I can add in some other colors here, like some orange colors, and if I wanted to spend some time on this, I could create kind of a sunset effect. Now if I change my color to more of a greenish color, then I can tint the water a different color. If I want the mountains to be kind of purplish, then I can make them purple. I'm being kind of sloppy here, but you get the idea. I'm going to change my clone source to texture, and you can also clone individual objects into your painting. For example, I'll scroll down and I'll choose this horse as my source. Of course, I'll want to show my source, so I'll go ahead and choose show texture. I can also show the transform textures panel so I can move and scale this horse around. I'll choose a move in size, move the horse down, scale it down smaller, click on commit and then OK, and we can have the horse appear down here. I'll go ahead and create a new layer above all the other layers, and I'll go ahead and paint. Now I've painted in this horse, and if I want to, I can choose other colors like this bluish color, and I'm not limited to using the colors that are in the original. I can use any colors that I like. I can even go in here and choose a blender, and I can smooth out these transitions in color to blend this and make a nice intermediate color. Clone tinting can also be useful for adding character and randomness to thick paint and other brush types. I'll go ahead and select a thick paint brush. Let's try heavy texture knife. In order to add clone tinting, I'll need to enable clone color. And then up in the clone source flyout, I'll need to enable clone tinting. And then I'll need to choose a clone source. Let's say for our source, we're gonna use this floral fabric. Now if I choose a color like this light blue and I paint on a thick paint layer, you can see that I'm able to show that pattern. I'm gonna add more green. And if I paint a stroke with this, you can see it adds some variability to the color that I'm putting down. It creates almost a marbled effect. I can change the clone source to something else such as a texture or an embedded image. It's a pretty interesting feature. Next are some enhancements to layers in Corel Painter. One of the challenges of working with Corel Painter is that some of the brushes are only able to paint on special layer types. Unless you know which types of brushes are compatible with each layer type, it can be frustrating to paint with special media like watercolor. Fortunately, Corel Painter 2021 adds compatibility icons to the brush selector to give you an indication of which types of layers are compatible with each brush. So right now I'm in the thick paint category, and of course these brushes are all going to be compatible with thick paint. But if I switch to another category, let's say blenders, then we can see that coarse oily blender is compatible with default and thick paint layers. Diffuse blur is only compatible with default layers. Just add water is compatible with default and thick paint. If I switch to real watercolors, these brushes are only compatible with watercolor layers. You can click on these icons that will automatically search for brushes that are compatible with that particular layer type. So you can see WC is for watercolor, TP is for thick paint, D is for brushes that are compatible with the default layer, LI for liquid ink brushes, and GL for brushes that rely on the gel composite method. If you don't like these compatibility icons, you can disable them from the options in the brush selector. You can uncheck compatible layers and those will go away. Should you ever try to paint with an incompatible layer and brush, you'll be greeted with a new warning message which offers you some options for how you can move forward. You can control how these messages display and trigger a decision automatically using the new special layers menu in the Curl Painter preferences. You can choose what to do based on each layer type, and there's also a prompt that deals with gel brushes. While we're on the topic of special layers, let's create a new layer, and I'll go ahead and paint on it with a brush that is not a watercolor brush. Let's say pens and pencils, leaky pen. We can now convert default layers into watercolor layers. You can also convert the canvas as well. Now that this is a water layer, I can select a watercolor brush and I can paint into it and have the paint interact in a wet way. If I create another watercolor layer, then I can also merge multiple watercolor layers together into a single layer while retaining watercolor editability. 
and you can now flip watercolor layers horizontally and vertically. The Layers panel has been updated to allow you to create any of the four layer types with one click. If you don't like this change, you can restore the previous behavior by going to the Layer Options menu, Special Layer Controls, and then uncheck Show Special Layer Buttons. That'll put it back to this collapsed menu, and you can get to these four options here. The Layer Panel Options and the Layers menu have been reorganized and synchronized to make it easier to find what you're looking for. I've created an extra layer and locked both of these layers. You can now unlock all the layers in your composition. This can be particularly useful if you're trying to drop all of your layers. To demonstrate the next feature, I have a grouping of layers here. We have a head with the eyes and nose and mouth on separate layers. These are all contained in a group. And if I select all the layers in this group and I merge them, then they're going to retain the name of the bottommost layer. You can also right click on a group and duplicate the group. As someone who uses the duplicate group command, I'm happy to see that it's been restored because it went missing a version or two ago. But as you can see, I've duplicated that group and the layers within that group. You can also duplicate the canvas layer by right clicking on it. And the last layers related update is that you can use the shift key to constrain layer movement with the layer adjuster. So for example, I'll draw a window like this. I'm gonna right click on that layer and duplicate it. Then I'm going to hold control on my keyboard, which switches me to the layer adjuster tool and I'll drag, but I'll hold shift as I'm dragging, and that constrains this to the vertical axis, and I can't move it left or right. If I let go of shift while still holding control, hold down shift again, I can move it diagonally. Let go of shift, hold shift again, I can move it horizontally. Painter 2021 has added some additional command bars. There are three different types of command bars, file edit, canvas, and photo art. Each bar contains commands for specific workflows, these command bars are available in several shapes and sizes with and without these group labels. File Edit has commonly used commands found in the File and Edit menus, such as New and Save and Copy and Paste. The Canvas command bar contains commands used to manipulate your canvas, such as buttons to flip your canvas horizontal and vertical, a papers flyout, a resized canvas shortcut, and more. And the Photo Art command bar contains commands that are useful for photo painting. Mac users will be happy about this version because you can now utilize some additional Apple hardware in Painter 2021. You can zoom, pan, and rotate using the Mac trackpad and wireless trackpad. You can also use the touch bar to manipulate controls in Painter. This can be useful for selecting colors, adjusting brush size and opacity, and more. Apple Sidecar is supported in Painter 2021, which allows you to use your iPad as a display tablet. The iPad mirrors your desktop and the Painter user interface will automatically adjust to fit the resolution of your iPad. The Apple Pencil is also supported along with support for Pen Tilt. So that covers the major changes in Corel Painter 2021, but there were lots of little fixes that went into this version as well. For example, there are some updated icons for brush size, opacity, impasto, zoom levels, document view, and more. The eyedropper tool has a new, more accurate cursor and the magic wand works in add to selection mode. And now for my conclusion. The new thick paint compatible brushes make me feel excited about this version. Although the last two versions of Painter improved my workflow, they were kind of disappointing from a creative standpoint because there wasn't anything new for me to paint with. I feel more satisfied by this version because I can enjoy improvements to the interface while discovering new painting techniques using the upgraded brush technology. In my opinion, if you use thick paint a lot, this upgrade is a must have. It really adds to the versatility of thick paint and it makes it a much more enjoyable medium to work with. There are other reasons to upgrade as well. For instance, if you were unable to utilize the GPU enhancements in Painter 2020 and now your video card is supported, you might use the free 30 day trial to see whether the performance boost makes it worthwhile to upgrade to Painter 2021. If you're a photo painter and you wanna have more control over AI painting than you do in Painter Essential 7, then this is a good upgrade for you as well. And if you're a Mac user, you may want to upgrade to take advantage of some of your hardware like the trackpad, touch bar, and the Apple iPad Pro, which can run Corel Painter 2021 via sidecar. If you're interested in a more in-depth explanation of these new features and how they work together, check out my Corel Painter 2021 training course. And if you're new to Corel Painter, use my coupon code PTRAR to save $100 off the full version of Corel Painter 2021. I'll put a link to everything in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.